A few years ago, we rarely heard of dry eyes, and now it seems to be so popular that there are even eye drop ads on television for dry eye sufferers. So we're going to be talking about what it is, why we get it, and what can be safely done to treat it. So besides the new study that just came out on how to treat it safely, nutritionally, let's just define what dry eye means. It's just what you think. Just when, for, for, for once, it's just simple. It's just your eyes are dry. And when they are, they kind of sting and burn, and your vision gets a little bit fuzzy. So why are they dry? Well, they get dry because of, of a lot of reasons. It's stuff that's in the air that can be toxic. Uh, sometimes we're exposed to wind for long periods of time. Sometimes there's an autoimmune cause for it, and that's why they're using uh, drugs that are actually chemotherapy drugs on dry eyes in some people. And what about the surface of the cornea? Yeah, well, it only gets rough, and sometimes it gets a film. And so we have to really look at, at what dry eyes are, are all about. And basically, there's not enough, or there's poor quality tears. And you have to keep in mind, Vicki, that there, were, there are three layers of the film that coats the eye. The bottom one is mucus, which keeps the eye very, th the eye smooth, so it, the lids can glide over it and not cause that rough change. But also, there's a layer of water with some electrolytes in on the next layer on the top of it, and then finally on the very top of it is a film of oil that's made of essential fatty acids. A lot of it is GLA, which is an omega-6 anti-inflammatory, but also EPA and DHA, which are found in fish oil and are also anti-inflammatory. Well, what are some of the other things that are associated with dry eye? I know that, like when people are on the computer too long, that mm -hmm. that can do it. What right. are some other things? Well, there's some real interesting conditions. I mean, to start with, postmenopausal women seem to be at risk for it. And when we talked about it, you said, and I said, well, I wasn't quite sure. You said, well, don't we just kind of dry up then? I thought, <laughs> duh. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Something to do with hormone any, anyway. Right. There are a yes. number of drugs that do it. People who have diabetes or rheumatoid arthritis or lupus or scleroderma can all get it. Sjogren's is a disease that's really commonly associated with it. We know all about uh, a lot of us know about, but also people who've had LASIK surgery, which is something I frankly don't recommend because about one person in 20 has a problem that's ongoing from LASIK surgery that's a big deal. And then probably from taking LASIK also. LASIK, yeah. Well, it dries the eye just like hydrochlorothiazide does and some of the other uh, drugs that are used uh, that are treated in medicine. And probably antihistamines. Antihistamines for sure. Some of the antipsychotics do it. Accutane can do it. And uh, so there are many causes, and that's probably why it's so common now. It's, it's really induced a lot of the time by things that we cause ourselves. So on television, we see ads for things like, for example, restasis. We see mm -hmm. that one all the time. Right. Um, is there a downside to using that drug? Well, I think so. Anytime you're treating an autoimmune condition, which is what it is in that setting, at least that's what it's thought to be in that setting, then you're using chemotherapy, which is what cyclosporine is. And, of course, anytime you're attacking the body and killing cells like the immune cells, there's a potential downside to it that they can be real problematic, like getting infections or uh, getting toxic reactions to it because it's, it's killing cells. Well, I know many people also end up using steroid eye drops. Mm -hmm. Another thing that's great for an, an, for anti-inflammatory effect but not very good for healing. In fact, steroids, the problem with them is they retard healing. So you wind up not solving the inflammation that's there except in the acute setting. And over the long haul, it might actually make things worse. So it's not really such a smart idea to use things systemically. In other words, to take pills. And the sure. eye drops can also be toxic. You know, it's interesting. One time I remember I was in the store and I, needed, I, th I thought I needed some eye drops. And I ended up with no eye drops because by the time <laughs> I got through was in it. <laughs> reading all the ingredients, it's yeah. like, I, I don't want to use them. So what can people use instead of all these possibly toxic <laughs> solutions and yeah, pills? Well, well, that's what this study was about, okay? So the study basically was published in a journal called Cornea in August of 2013, and they evaluated 38 women who had dry eyes that were postmenopausal. And they got the idea of why not try essential fatty acids because there's some previous studies that were done that showed that just making a solution of flaxseed oil in an ophthalmic preparation, putting that in the eye seemed to work. But if you take the 
GLA, EPA, and DHA, which are the active ingredients, they actually have something to do with the waterproofing of the skin. And the cornea, of course, is part of our skin. So in other words, those essential fatty acids are what's in Keep, a healthy, the healthy fat like the flaxseed oil. Yes. Well, the flaxseed oil, you have to have the enzymes to convert the alpha-linolenic acid and the linoleic acid into what I call the down-chain metabolites that are the active ingredients, which would be GLA on the omega-6 side, and it would be EPA and DHA on the omega-3 side. But if you don't have those enzymes, it doesn't work so good. So this company came out and said, well, we'll, we'll put this in a product that has the active ingredients, and they tested it, and sure enough, it worked. You know, for years, we've heard that vitamin A is good for our eyes. Mm. What about vitamin A? Vitamin A is very good to keep our eyes lubricated too it not, it, and help prevent so the dry eyes. So to take it in a pill form. You could do it that way or take it in drops. It's made both ways. So a combination of vitamin A, uh, essential fatty acids, uh, and maybe just artificial tears would be a good way to try and treat this problem. So these uh, essential fatty acids that you were just talking about, the DHA and the EPA, EPA and, and the GLA, GLA. Uh -huh. so they, they smooth and soothe the ocular surface of the eye, and mm -hmm. they also control the disease. Well, they help very much to control the disease. So. You know, one thing I'd like to bring up here um, that we haven't discussed is that Sometimes when people are in the hospital, particularly if they're in the intensive care mm. unit or someone that may be in a, in a coma, their eyes can, can dry out because many times they can't blink and they can't, you know. They, they can can't. actually get eye ulcers from that. Yeah, they That's can. Right. So um, just to keep an eye on that, to just be aware of that if you're their advocate, to make sure that the nurses are keeping uh, moist compresses on their eyes. It's a good point. So when we look at this whole business of dry eyes, we should try the simple things that work first that we understand from a cellular biochemistry of the body. So the EPA, DHA, and GLA uh, is a good way to start out and what we recommend if you have dry eyes.